Chao from Rome, where Chinese President Xi Jinping has kicked off the first leg of his European tour. The three-nation visit includes France and Monaco, but it's really his stop here in Italy that has people talking the most. Why? This moment here, the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, that will deepen Italy and China's economic ties. President Xi's visit to Rome saw a total of 29 deals signed, focusing on everything from agriculture and finance to energy and engineering. Combined, they're worth $2.8 billion. Ma tutti gli accordi che stiamo andando a firmare in questo momento si fondano sulla possibilità per il Made in Italy di andare in Cina, dopo tanti anni in cui il Made in China veniva in Italia. So what brings China to Europe? And why is Italy, a member of the NATO alliance and the third largest country in the Eurozone, so receptive? In 2013, China announced its Belt and Road Initiative, an ambitious plan that aims to strengthen infrastructure and trade links between China and an estimated 65 other countries across three continents. It links the western tip of Europe to North Africa and the Gulf countries and continues all the way through to Southeast Asia and onto the east coast of China. Gaining both sea and land access to Europe is an essential part of the initiative. In 2016, debt-ridden Greece sold a 51% stake of its largest seaport, Piraeus Port, to China's state-owned Costco Shipping. The $313 million sale was a part of Greece's privatization process and came at a time of deep economic distress. This was a first point of entry into Europe for China and a Mediterranean base. Italy has now emerged as another European economic partner, but crucially, it is the first G7 industrialized nation to officially endorse China's Belt and Road Initiative and has shown a willingness to open up its ports as well. History buffs will note the remarkable similarities between the key locations on China's new Belt and Road Initiative and Italian Marco Polo's route to and from China in the 1200s. Both routes pass through the Adriatic Sea, which is where the port of Trieste is located. It is one of the ports mentioned in the MOU. In fact, Belt and Road in Italian is commonly referred to as Via della Seta, which literally translates to the Silk Road. Now, this is all coming at a very interesting time for Italy, economically speaking as well. 2018 was a year that saw the country underperform versus other Eurozone countries. Italy's general election in March didn't have a clear winner, but it did have losers from the more established parties, like Matteo Renzi's Democratic Party and Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia Party. A few months later, Italy's new government was sworn in, a coalition of the Eurosceptic Lega Party and the anti-establishment Five Star Movement. This is a government that has simplified a lot the panorama political Italian panorama, because for the first time it's a government that has two forces politiche soltanto that lo sustain and not five or six forces politiche. The new government's initial budget increased deficit spending, essentially using more money than it was getting. Markets did not like that. It led to a sharp decline in Italian assets, and trading in bank stocks even had to be temporarily stopped. You see, Italy has one of the highest debt-to-GDP ratios in the world. Its outstanding debt is now at more than $2.5 trillion, much more than its GDP of $1.9 trillion, which still hasn't fully recovered since the financial crisis. Foreign investors are also putting less money into Italy. After investors put a record $77 billion into Italy in 2008, foreign direct investment took a tumble in 2009 and hasn't really recovered since. Italy sees inking a deal with Beijing as one way of attracting new investments into the country. And trade is an area that could have good potential too. Italian exports to China in 2018 only tallied up to about $15.5 billion, paling in comparison to Germany and the UK. C'è la volontà di aiutare le nostre aziende a dare più lavoro in Italia, aumentando le esportazioni verso quei paesi. Italy is technically in a recession. The hope, of course, is that inking deals like this will help boost productivity and growth. But not everyone is happy with this newfound alliance. The EU are skeptical of the Belt and Road Initiative, not least because they view it as a means of China advancing their military and diplomatic clout within the continent. It's also coming at a time where the relationship between Brussels and Rome is quite frayed on back of Italy's public spending plans, as well as their hardline stance towards immigration. And in the US, the National Security Council warned that endorsing BRI lends legitimacy to China's predatory approach to investment and will bring no benefits to the Italian people. The White House has also labeled it as a vanity project. While Prime Minister Conte has defended the deal with China, the question becomes, is Italy open for business or is it up for sale? <laughs>